On today's episode, it's multi-lens using the Nick Collection's Analog Effects Pro. Hello everyone, welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today we're working with Analog Effects Pro. Now I wanted to show you a really cool filter inside of Analog Effects Pro, and that is the multi-lens. It's really cool, you can get some really great creative results with it. I'm working from Photoshop today, uh, and when you're using any of the Nick software, you don't have to duplicate the background layer so you can work non-destructively. Nick does that for you. And also when you're working with uh, uh, Nick products, they work as smart filters. So if you like to work non-destructively, you can do that. I generally don't, but for those of you who like to do that, you can use them as smart filters. So all I need to do next is uh, click on the uh, Analog Effects uh, Pro icon. It'll launch Analog Effects Pro and we will get started. We're now in Analog Effects Pro and it's defaulted with the classic Camera One preset. And so here's my image here. Now, if you don't like this one, you can go ahead and click on any of these other presets or you can start from scratch if you want to. I'm going to click this little arrow right here. And when I do, this interface opens up and you can see that we have all these different tool combinations here. And here's my multi lens that I want to use. And then we have tools over here. So I'm going to show you a few different scenarios that we can work with. And one is uh, we can work with any one of these particular tool combinations that we want to. Now, you notice classic camera, all these filters over here are involved with that particular preset that we're using classic one right now, but we want to work with multi lens. Okay. So I'm going to click on multi lens. And when I do, we'll see a bunch of new presets over here. Now these presets are uh, showing us that multi lens view or look and, but it's also altering the colors and things of the image. So it's processing the image in certain ways as well. For instance, if I click on this one right here, give it a second to render out here, you're gonna see this type of multi-lens uh, look, but it's altering the look of my image itself, okay? Or if I click on this one, you'll see it's altering the look. If I don't wanna alter the look of the image and I just wanna work with the image that I brought into analog effects, here's what I do come back to the arrow here, click this, and all we need to do, instead of clicking the tool combination, just click on multi-lens under tools here. And when I do, watch what happens. We'll see the original image here, and all those other filters go away, so we can just work with the multi-lens itself if we didn't want to alter the image, okay? So that's the way that works. And now you'll notice this interface is here, and it has all the different uh, things that we can do with it, and I'll show you how this works. Now under multi-lens, we have these different type of multi-lens looks here. Okay, so here's our first one. Here's our second one, our third one. So you just gotta pick the one that you wanna use. All right. And I think I like the first one. So I'm gonna choose the first one. The second thing you need to do is decide you wanna have a border color and what color you want it to be. Now you have your choice between white. No, it's already on white here. Or you could choose black or you could choose no border at all. So you determine what you like. And I think I like black. So I'm going to go ahead and choose black. And now we have this slider here. We can make it narrow or wider the border. So if I move it to the right, I'll make my border wider. And if I move it to the left, I'll make it more narrow. So you choose where you want it to be. And I think maybe right around here looks pretty good. And next we have vignette. Now it defaults at 35%, which is basically, I think, no vignette. So if we move it to the right, will darken the top and the bottom of the image. It doesn't seem to affect the sides, but just the top and the bottom. If I move it to the left, it'll lighten the top and the bottom. So let me just maybe darken it up just a little bit. Maybe something like that looks pretty good. Now the next two sliders are interesting and they kind of work together. We have a variation strength, which I'll get to in a second. And then we have a variation type. We'll do that first. And it's a hard one to explain. So you'll just see what it's doing. And I don't really know what it's doing, but it alters the look of the image. So right now that's variation one. Let's click on uh, variation two. See the change there? Here's one. Here's two. It got a little more contrast. Here's variation three. Okay. And here is variation four and variation five. So which one do we like? Okay, I'm thinking, I like variation four. Now we have this variation strength. So if we move it to the right, we can make that stronger. If we move it to the left, we can alter it. I guess we're making it weaker. 
Not 100% sure what that's doing, but I'm just moving it and seeing what kind of result we get. And I think right around there looks pretty good, and I'm happy with that. Now, we can always come here, see where it says multi-lens, and you can click this off, and you can see your original image, and now you can see what it looks like with the multi-lens view. Or you can click this compare up here and see the before and after as well. But I think that's looking really good. Now, the only thing I need to do next would be to uh, move these uh, images around inside this cell right here. Now, it's that same image, uh, but it's just duplicated or triplicated, I guess you could say. It's here, here, and here in these three different cells. So now we have to uh, decide where we want these images to be in each one of these cells. Now, this is where we need to use our artistic license and decide how we want to arrange these images in these cells. Let's start out with this one right here. Okay, so we can enlarge this image like this or make it smaller. We can move it around here. We can move it up. We can move it down. And I think right here is pretty good. We can also rotate it as well if we wanted to give it a little bit of a rotation. And I might do that. Just give it a slight rotation. That looks pretty good for our first image. Now we have to decide on these next two images here. Let's work with the one on the right first. Okay, so I think what I might want to do on this one is, let, let me enlarge it. Maybe something like this. And let's move it around. And yeah, I might want to do something like that. Maybe not quite as large. Let's see. I want to get both of our eyes in there. I don't have to get the eye on the left quite the whole way in, but what do you think? I think that looks kind of fun right there. I may come back and alter this some more, but now let's take this image over here and she has this really cool tattoo. So what I might want to do with this one is really enlarge that tattoo. So let's enlarge this a good bit and really show that tattoo off. Like maybe, yeah, something. Maybe hide her eye right there. Yeah, so we can really set. What do you think? That's looking pretty good. Now, here's where a smart filter really comes to play, because if, if you're not 100% happy and you may want to save this out, send it back to Photoshop, and if you felt you needed to make some alterations, then you could relaunch analog effects and send that smart filter back in, and you wouldn't have to start all from scratch again. But I guess you could say I'm flying without a net. I have no smart filter. So let me just come to this guy here and let me see what I want to do. What if I want to mimic what's left here? See what's missing of our eye here? Pull this down to the same plane like this. Yeah. So like, in other words. Yeah. So in other words, like this right hand side and this left hand side, they could match up. And I'm seeing her tattoo there. Does that make sense? I think I like it. Give me a second or two to ponder this. Okay, I pondered for a few seconds. I paused the video. So I think what I want to do is just see it, you know, hide that eye, I think. Just maybe right like that. I think that looks, looks better. It was looking kind of a little bit creepy to me with that eye sticking out there. But I like it. I think I'm happy with it. Now, if we wanted to, we could come over here to the left and we could continue to add, you know, dust and scratches, photo plates, motion blurs, you know, lens distortions, whatever we want. But I'm happy. I just wanted to work with the original image and show you what we could do with multi-lens. And I'm happy with it. So now all we need to do is come down here and click OK. That'll send us right back into Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop. Now you'll notice it names our layer for us, Multi-Lens, AEP2, Analog Effects Pro 2. So that's kind of nice. We can click this eye. Here's our before and here's our after. So what do you think? I really like uh, Multi-Lens. You know, when I first saw Multi-Lens in Analog Effects, I thought, where would I ever use this at? But I find you could get some really cool images, especially like, like when you're doing like fashion photography and things like that. Think magazine covers and ads and, and so on and so forth. You can get some really cool results, but that is multi-lens.
Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That was Multi Lens in Analog Effects Pro. I really enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think. Leave comments and questions. If you enjoyed my tutorial today, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.